Sponsored by Ladbrokes, Infinitum, Newman and Everlast. This bout sanctioned and officials appointed by the British Boxing Board of Control. Steward in charge is Matt Harris. Area representative is Ryan Churchill. Inspectors work in the contest are Tony Hedges, Kenny Basford, Brad Middleton and Terry Whitehouse. Three judges score the bout. They are Steve Gray of Fleetwood, Terry O'Connor from Birmingham and Bob Williams from Watford. Timekeeper on the bell is Jason Booth of Newark and upon the sound of the bell, the third man in the ring is our star referee, Victor Lachlan from Barhead, Scotland. Those are the officials and they are ready. The boxers are in the ring and they are ready. So for the Friday Night Fight fans joining us live on Channel 5, let's get down to business. Firstly, standing in the blue corner with his head trainer, Peter Sims, is the challenger, wearing white and black, and standing in the ring as the reigning WBA Continental Light Heavyweight Champion, boxing out of Crystal Palace, London, England, introducing Craig Spider Richards. And across the ring stands the undefeated champion with his head trainer, Paul Coulihan, wearing grey with black and standing in the ring as a former English light heavyweight champion. Tonight he makes the first defence of his title. He is the reigning and defending British light heavyweight champion from Birmingham, England, the undefeated Shekhar. Hey boys, you know the rules, remember, obey my commands at all time and defend yourselves at all time. Touch gloves. No, Let's go. Come on. Come on, man. Well, Shaq and Pitters poses a series of problems for all of his opponents and Craig Richards the first round. has to solve those here. Do feel, Richie, that he has to start well, Richards. Yes, he does, and he has to control the pace, if anything. Pitters, as you noticed, as the bell went, just ran straight to the centre of the ring. He's got that centre, that's very important for him. A tall, rangy boxer with the height and reach advantage that he has. He has to use the centre of the ring, so he's got full range of, of movement. Uh, if he gets backed up onto the ropes and into the corners, that's where he'll be more vulnerable. But from the centre of the ring, it's going to be very difficult for Richard. So it's important he sets the pace, if anything, and he's got to throw he's, he's, the punches in bunches, as they say. For me, he's got to work very, very hard to beat Pitters here. Already trying to establish that jab in the early stages, Richards. Such a key punch that for Shaq and Pitters. If Richards could take that away from him, it might be one of the keys to the fight. <laughs> Missed with the left hook and was punished with the right hand there. Richard spent much of this week trying to goad Pitters because he wants to drag him into a, a real war. He feels that's his best chance. If Pitters boxes behind his jab at range, he's, of course, going to be very hard to beat, although Richards has started well. And interestingly, that height advantage, because of their styles, isn't so pronounced when you see them in the ring. Well, Pitters likes to have a wider stance, which obviously makes him, you know, his, his height comes down a fraction and, and, and Richard does box tall so yeah there's there's not a lot of difference in, in the actual head height between the two fighters that's where Pitters has got to box there you, you just seen him throw that one two nice and straight if he keeps a gap between himself uh, and Richards then it could be a hard night for Richards like you said Dave Richards has got to take the jab away so he's got to either block it like that or parry it or he's got to slip it and then time the right hand over the top for Pitters that jab has got to be sharp and he's got to hit the target if it misses and he falls in that's when Richards could time that counter and catch him with the right hand 
Good confident start this from Craig Richards. Peter's still trying to establish his position in the centre of the ring. Little bits of success from him, but Richards is certainly uh, posing more of a threat so far than their mutual opponent Chad Sugden did. Approaching the end of this opening round. And it's uh, a close one to get us underway. That's good work from Pitters right at the end of it, though. Good? Good. Nice round. Nice round. Back to motion. Feeling good? Three from it. Four good ahead. In that corner. Trying to get a listen in. I thought a fairly even round. Both boxers had, had a little bit of success here and there. Which has worked well with his jab, but so did Pitters. Just missed there with that, that counter. So it's all about inches, isn't it? Just missing there with the by inches and then just coming back with the shot. Close round, could have gone either way to be quite honest, but I just thought Pitters may have just done enough. Peter Sims there with Craig Richards. Round two. Richards drew against Chad Sugden. His one defeat was in a challenge for Frank Budioni's British title in Cardiff back in October 2017. But he was a, a late replacement that night. And he actually acquitted himself pretty well. And he lost by three rounds on the. Good job, good job. Victor Lachlan's card, the man who's refereeing tonight. Be patient, be patient. Be patient. Richard started much sharper tonight than he did against Sugden. The, the jab has been really sharp. You know, he's had to spring into range because he's given away that height and reach. But it's a safe shot. He's landing it and he's looking to build from it. Good with the defense as well. Dropping out nice and sharp out of range. I think it was just a feeling that night against Chad Sugden at the York Hall that Richards wasn't quite as motivated as he might have been. He looks sharp and ready tonight. He knows what a chance this is. Doubling up the jab that time, Pitters. Yeah, both taking a look at each other, aren't they? Neither one of them really want to make a mistake. And you can't afford to fall short. Either boxer has to hit the target. They fall short, and they're open then to the to the counter. Just wonder what an advantage it might have been for Pitters to have already boxed during this uh, lockdown period with no fans might be more used to it Richards still adjusting good jab that time that's his best jab of the fight so far from Shaq and Pitters just maybe starting to find that range exactly he's just starting to find that range the guys are still settling into the fight I think Richards as well George he's just waiting a little bit too long isn't he at the moment and that's just allowing Pitters to work with that jab See, again, he's just waiting there, waiting for the probably the shot to fall short. He's got to slip that jab, but he's got to be first to the punch, I think, Richards. Yeah, if he's going to creep forward, you want to see some more lateral head movement. Just to not have a stack target for Pitters to punch back at, and then look to counter off of it. Good right hand there, though, from Richards. <laughs> Seen a big rise in the popularity of chess in the, these last couple of months because of a certain television program. And this is developing into a real chess match in Redditch between Shaq and Pitters and Craig Richards. Good work, Spider. Good round, Shaq. Good round. Good round. Good It's just hard, isn't it, to, to catch the words in the corner. 
of Peter Sims. I thought Richard's just waited a little bit too long, as I said in that second round. Pitt has worked better with his jab. That wasn't too, this was at the start of the, of the round, Richard's worked better with his jab, but Pitters, as the round went on, then he started to, to measure the gap and distance much better with that lead hand of his, moving his feet into range, throwing a perfect shot like that, and then just staying on Borders, the outside again just to avoid seconds. what's coming back, so that wasn't too bad. Seconds out. Round three. Well, Shaka and Pitters, He's got Mick Hennessy stable of boxers plus a few others. You got this, don't worry. Cheering him on here if you're wondering about the noise. Great spirit between them. And it's his night tonight, and they all recognize that, and they're right behind him. And there's that jab put to really good effect early on at the start of round three. Yeah, the right hand counter from Richards. I think he's just got to up the tempo a little bit here, Richards, work a little bit harder. I thought he waited a little bit too long in, in the, the second round. He's got to do more work for me. He's got to go through the gears a little bit more. I think the pace is suiting Pitters, especially with those single shots, boxing at range. I think Richards has just got to up it a little bit. Just feel as if Richards has to put some uncertainty into Shaq and Pitters' mind, has to break up his rhythm to have any chance here. Like I said, Dave, I think Pitters is, is harder to catch when he's boxing from the centre of the ring. As you time that right-hand counter, you've got to slip that jab and, and whip that right hand over the top. I think Richards, for me, has got a more sustained pressure and push Pitters back, getting back to the ropes. Nine times out of ten, his feet will come square. Then you can move up and down the target. But from the centre of the ring, he's a difficult man to get to, his Pitters. Saw Dex Spellman uh, driving back in periods in their fight, and the left hook was a good punch. We thought it might be for Richards tonight. This is better from Richards. That time he did drive him back. They're both starting to find their range now and happier to let bigger shots go. There you go. There you go. Little shake of the head there from Richards when Pitt has landed that right hand. Remember, Richards. Does have power, eight knockouts on his record. That right hand is a weapon. That time he made Pitters fall short. He's a Craig Richards' best moments of the fight so far. I think when Richards gets up close as well, he's got to target the left hook. If you look at Pitters' right hand, he just drops ever so slightly, just below his chin. And if Richards can get up close to, to Pitters, then that's probably the, the shot he's, he's got to target. In the clinches, that left hook. Still an element of caginess about it. Both very aware of what the other can do, but this has been a better round for the challenger, the spider, Craig Richards. Jack and Pitters, and here's some of the action from the round, Richie. The pace changed slightly here, and it, it changed because Richard's actually upped the tempo a little bit. This was a good attack, pushing Pitters back towards the ropes. I thought he was a lot more positive in this round, and I thought he actually won this round. Better work. There was there, that lovely slip, but he just missed with the right hand, but that's what he's got to do. He's got to slip that jab. But it was a better round for Richards, and he'll be, he'll be encouraged, and that, that corner would be encouraged by that. Corners, 10 seconds. Nice and calm in there so far. Craig Richards, let's round see if he can continue four. that good work here. Start of round four. Craig Richards in those black and white shorts. The shorter man here against the champion, Shaq and Pitters. First defense after he won the title against Chad Sugden. He had Sugden hurt in that fight and 
was criticised for not following up and finishing it. Talking to him earlier on tonight, he said he's determined if he hurts Richards to try and finish this early. Peters started this round aggressive, pressing from the front foot. Let some really good straight shots go. Good shot. Yeah, Richards let a shot of his own go there, and he follows it up with a right hand. Peters down, and Peters on shaky legs. Great time shot from Craig Richards. Now then, as Shaka Peters recovered, he still looks a little shaky here, and he needs to be careful. Big right hand over the top, wasn't it, from Richards? There was actually two shots that went in. He's still not recovered here, Peters. Richards has got to jump on him here. He's missing. He's got to set that up behind the jab. But nevertheless, a big round for Richards here. And there's still a minute and a half to go, and Peters is fighting here when he needs to try and survive and Richards lets those big shots go again straight right hand this time Peters is hanging on desperately here what drama in round four Peters is in real trouble here his legs are still not under him still not recovered George is he yet this is where Richards needs a clear head little half step back and don't waste your work, pick the target, he did it well there. Minute to go, minute for Peters to survive here. You just got to watch out for that right hand over the top. You can see how he's lining up, he actually went moving, he changed it then, he tried to throw the right uppercut. And Peters, just allow Peters to come back. It's the right hand over the top, which is the danger shot up to now. Definitely, Richard. Richie. Definitely. I, just, just, I don't know why he's not just throwing a big loopy right hand over the top, even if it lands. You know, on top of, you know, on the side of the head. Doesn't need to hit on the chin. That Pitter's head has just cleared a little bit here, I think. Yeah, precious seconds, you see, are ticking by. And that, seconds, George, you know yourself, to a fighter that's very, very fit. It's, it's a long time, isn't it? You can't let him recover. No, definitely. You don't want that lull of him getting through the round of that minute rest. And then you maybe burn up some energy trying to get the fight finished yourself. Final 10 Cheers. seconds of the round, chopping right hand from Richards, that was the shot we should have seen 90 seconds ago from him. Pitters survives, but high drama here. Well, it all happened here, let's have a look at this right hand, there it was, there's a chopping right hand on the side of the head. And that's what started the ball rolling here. And then Richards knew he'd landed that good shot. He then goes in and catches him again. That was the better shot, in fact, right on the point of the chin. Super punch. That's the first one. That staggered him, but the one coming up now is a chopping right hand. He keeps it going. And that's the shot there. That was a belting shot, bang on the button. And that's what put St. Peter's to yeah. the canvas. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Blood to the mouth as well of Peter's. Good, Looks like to that top oh, lip. Ten seconds. First crisis of his career. Round five. Weathered the initial storm, but is that head clear? The first thing they asked him when he sat down is your head clear. Has he recovered? And can he get back? And get back to his boxing behind that jab. Well, that's what he's got to do. Um, but you know, at the end, they see those are the shots, those crisp, sharp jabs. That's what he's got to do. Richards now, he's just going to wait for a slow jab, and he's just going to time the, the right hand counter again. That's what he'll be looking for, George, won't he? He'll be he'll be waiting for a slow shot from Pitters, so he can he can respond with that right hand counter. Definitely, Richie. I mean, he knows that shot's there now, there for him, and it works. You know, he doesn't even necessarily need to wait for the jab. He should be pumping the jab out himself, putting Pitts under pressure, knowing that big white hand's going to come flying in at any moment. Don't really want to let him have the first half of this round off. Just keep him under that constant pressure. So many people had Shaq and Pitters as the comfortable winner of this fight, using that range, using all of his natural advantages, but Craig Richards, the moment is in the process of turning all of that on its head. You can see the concentration in Richards' face. He's just waiting, waiting for the opportunity to land. Look, see, you can see it just waiting to land that right hand over the top. 
fitters' jab has got to be sharp, it's got to be accurate. He can't afford anything slow here with that lead hand. Worth mentioning as well, should this end up being close and going the distance, that's a 10-8 round for, for Richards. Better jab there from Pitters. Been a quiet round after the storm of the fourth. Really good jab though from Richards and he's growing in confidence. The opening round, Pitters looked the, the dominant force in there, but at the moment it's Craig Richards. Pitters might be getting his feet back under him now. 30 seconds left in the round. Good right hand from him. And a good long right hand. It's that shot you talked about in your analysis, George, before the fight. But there's Richard's jab. I also mentioned Richard's feet. He presses so well. You know, he, it's an aggressive stance that he creeps in with. He's now being quite springy. He's, he's springing in and out. He doesn't move, wasting energy doing that. But at the same time, he allows him to spring back in with his own shots. Close round this round five. The right hand from Pitters. Great exchange at the end of the round. Ladbrook sponsors Boxing on Five. Shaka and Pitters in that yeah, corner. They're trying to Second get his confidence down. back here and encourage him. Round six. Developing into a really good fight. There's Richie's scorecard at the moment. He's got Richards up by a point. That 10 8 round. Long way still to go. That's it. Richards is actually boxing a clever contest here. He's just boxing on the outside, and what he's trying to do is he's trying to draw that jab at Pitters and make him just fall short, and he's trying to judge the, the distance. It's a clever way of boxing. He's just staying on the outside. Sometimes he's just out of range. Sometimes, you know, he, mis he misjudges it, and he gets caught with the odd jab here and there. But he's trying to block them as well, you see. But I can, you, I can see what he's doing, George, staying on the outside, hoping that Pitters doesn't throw the jab quite to the target and then he can respond with a fast counter. Yeah. He's getting caught the odd time with the jab though. Think. Much better pressure this from Pitters. And Richards responds. And again, he's found the range terrifically well with that jab, Richards. This is where Richards is going to have his success. If he springs in with that jab, just keep landing. It's a safe shot for him. And once he's landed two or three of them, he knows the target's in front of him. Then he can start throwing the right hand and getting the right hand involved. He runs the risk of it if he's waiting to counter that jab from Peters, which is so long. He might get touch with it and he might be out of position that he can't get his right hand off. We'd well, have thought before the fight that in a battle of the jabs, Peters would be in front, but at the moment it's Richard's jab that's proving to be a most effective weapon. He's thrown it from the waist, which is always a, a, difficult to actually de detect when the, when the punch is thrown from there. Just out of the line of vision. And it seems to be a little bit more accurate, Richards' his jab. I think Pitters has maybe got to double that. Now, that's a nice jab from, from Pitters, just as I said that. 
Pitters then comes back with his own good jab. That's a solid jab to the body also from him. You see that blood to the mouth of Pitters as well. But there's his right hand. Great shot that from Shaka and Pitters. That's his best punch of the fight. And he tries to follow it up. One of the first times, George, we've seen that, that straight one-two, isn't it, from Pitters? It was a good combo, that. It was, yeah. And I think he needs to... A little bit more urgency from him. There it is, and again, just let it go. Just let it go at this point in the fight. Try and re-establish a bit more control. Straight right from Richards, and then he took an uppercut. Great action in round six. Ladbrook sponsors Boxing on Five. I think Pitter's got back to, um, to winning ways there. He pops well behind that jab and brought in the right hand. Just nicked the round for me, evens it up. Into the second half of the fight now. Richie's got it level. Wonder how you're scoring it at home. Been close rounds, that 10-8 round, a clear one for Richards in round four. Unarguable that. Good success here from Pitters. It's almost as if the, the situation in the fight is forcing Pitters to be more aggressive. And he's perhaps finding out a little bit about himself here tonight. Well, Richards' corner was saying double jab right hand. I think because they know the double jab will bring him into range for his right hand. If he tries to counter with just a straight right hand from out of range, it's not as effective. Jab, double jab was nice. Good single jab though from Pitters. See, this is Pitters' fight. That's slightly longer range, a little bit more time to think. And there was the double jab right hand from Richards, and again, and again. And Pitters was nearly caught again there. Beaten to the punch there, Pitters. That was a good attack. Two attacks from Richards, doubling up his jab and then sending the right hand over. Pitters couldn't defend it, got caught with that right hand over the top after that double jab. Paul, more positive work there from Richards. Well, we were talking, Richie, about this fight during the week, and you were telling me that Richards had to drive Pitters back, and he's done that really effectively. Yeah, especially behind that double jab, that double jab right hand that we just saw. When he ups the pace and pushes Pitters back, that's when Pitters, for me, is a little bit more vulnerable, but when you've got Pitters controlling the pace, from the centre of the ring, he's more difficult to get to. I think uh, Richards is bo he's boxing a clever contest here. But that's better work from Pitters. Yeah, he finished that exchange with a jab. Just knocked Richards' head back. Which is what the taller guy should always be doing. You see it time and time again. Finish the exchange with a straight shot. Another close round, this one. Success again for Richards with that jab. Pockets of success for Pitters as well. Good right hand there from Pitters. Look to follow it up, but yeah, Victor Lockley not happy about that at all. That's a risky shot for Richards, the left hook. It, he's thrown it a few times throughout the fight, not had an awful lot of success with it. And got, uh, and got caught heavy, it seemed. That... Especially if he leads with it, that's the problem. He leads with the left hook. Ladbrook sponsors Boxing on Five.
from both boxers in this round. Pitts has finished the round quite strongly, but here, that was a great double jab right hand from Richards. Round eight. Five rounds to go in Redditch for the British light heavyweight title. And however you've got this on your scorecard, it's close. These final five rounds might just be definitive. Shakan Pitters in those black and grey shorts, the champion against Craig Richards from Crystal Palace in South London, the challenger. Doubling up that jab again. Advice to him in the corner from Peter Sims was stop loading up on the shots, try and get back to your boxing and box behind that double jab. Try and let things flow a bit more. Right. Jab's working well for Peters in this round. He's found the range of it. Just keeps offsetting Richard, putting him off balance. And just controlling the pace, isn't he, with that jab. Again, Richards has got to up the pace for me. Double that jab and right, get that, bring that right hand into play. Fittish has shown that vulnerability in this fight that we haven't really seen before. Down in that dramatic fourth round. That's it. That's it. I was set. Richards knows that he can hurt him. Better work again there from Pitters. Just wonder if this goes on to what extent will Craig Richards regret not jumping on Pitters a bit more when he had him so clearly hurt in that fourth round. He had a long time left in the round to survive. And frankly, there wasn't that much to survive. We'll see. I think Pitters has controlled this round very well with that jab, especially from the centre. He's controlled the pace, which is probably more important with jabs like that. He just took his... Um, Put off the gas a little bit here, Richards, in this round. I think we've got to give credit to, to Pitters, who's controlled it very well with the lead hand. Yeah, good work from Pitters. Let's look back quickly at that moment in the fourth. Here's the shot again from Richards. It's a cracking shot, wasn't it? That double jab right hand. And that had Pitters stumbling a little bit. And then what came was that one there. That was the shot. It really did the damage. Good, good, good. Here he is now, though, he's recovered well. Never more vulnerable than when you're throwing a shot, are you? And that's what happened to Petters there. No, definitely. I think the, the first right hand that went in, maybe shook the equilibrium in the head a little bit. A little bit off balance, and then your natural reaction is to punch away out of a bad situation sometimes. End up paying the price for it. Round nine. Well, in the last couple of rounds, it feels as if the tide has just turned. Pitters starting to dominate. You just feel with four rounds to go that it's Richards who needs to make something happen in round number nine as we go in towards those championship rounds. Richards' success has come from pressing the fight, moving forward, and then having to spring into range, always even behind the jab or you know, straight right hand. I think he's going to have to do that throughout this round. Good punches going in from Peters there. A good jab back from Richards. He's going to have to press this round, like press, put the pressure on. Put Peters under that pressure. 
put up the so, tempo, George, hasn't he, and go through the gears. Oh, that yeah. Maybe force some mistakes as well. Well, it's been high class this from both men so far, and it's close. <laughs> This is still pit as his fight for me at the longer range. You know, battle of the jabs. Just feels like he's found a rhythm. Shaq and Pitt is these last six minutes or so. That's better from Richards, though. See, that's what Richards has got to do. He's got to beat Pitters to the punch and start pressing, as George has been saying. Go through the gears, up the tempo, and just put Pitters under pressure. That's where he needs to get him on the ropes there. That's a good shot. And how much more effective that right hand is when he sets it up behind the jab. Looks really smooth, Craig Richards. Right hand that time from Pitters, though. Took it well, Richards. Final minute of round number nine. Fascinating fight this for the British title. Feels like this round is up for grabs in its last 40 seconds or so, and every round is going to be key potentially. And right hand for Richard. He hurt Peters again there, and he follows it up. And Peters is on shaky legs. Is Richard's dream about to come true? Peters responds, and Richard with a left hook. Surely rips the British title from him. Peters caught in the spider's web. Craig Richards is the British champion. What a fight. What a finish. Unbelievable that was, wasn't it? It was the right hand and then the left hook finished the job off. Incredible finish there. And you always felt that, that Richards obviously could land that right hand. He did. Pitters, a bit of a lapse in concentration, maybe, but it was a fairly even round. He catches him with a good right hand. George and then finished him off with a terrific left hook. Terrific left hook. I mean, I've been digging, <laughs> digging Richards out all night about his left hook, but what a phenomenal shot to, to finish the fight. See it here. That's that right uppercut, isn't it? And there's the left hook that finished it. That was an absolute cracker. There's a couple of good right hands before that as well. So there's the first one there. And Pitters just slides along the ropes. He's trying to recover, tries to hold on to Richards. Richards then stalks him. There's the uppercut, left up comes, and that finishes the job. That was a cracking finish by uh, Richards. There weren't too many people giving Craig Richards a chance here because Pitters is so awkward, so rangy. But boy, did Richards come here and perform. And he came and ripped the title from the champion. I'm already wondering about potential rematch. You'd watch that again. Oh, absolutely, because it was a very close fight up until then. You know, Richards always with, always had the danger, didn't he, with that right hand over the top and finished it off with a, with a great left hook. But yes, I mean, up till then, it was a very close fight. It was, it was either way. I think I had Pitters just in front, but it could have gone either way up to that point there. But what a finish that was from Richards. Always had that power on his side 47 percent knockout record coming into this i know that sometimes those statistics don't mean much but we knew he had power and in the end it told pitters made one mistake too many and richards made him pay and shaq and pitters will feel right now that his world has fallen apart the very tight mick hennessy team as they always do here to support him and they'll be there to hold him up after this as well but First defeat for him, a nightmare, but for Craig Richards, what a night. He is the new British champion, and in a moment's time, we can make it official. He's just going to get the uh, the branded T-shirt on, as is the way these days. Strap me up! Strap me up! I knew that would make it. And there's a little message for his fans as well. So let's get to Paul to make it official. The official end of this contest falls at 2 minutes 42 seconds of round number 9. Referee Victor Lachlan stops the contest. In his professional opinion, Shaq Ampitters is in no position to continue. 
therefore the winner and new British light heavyweight champion, Craig Spider Richard.